Here at Exxon, we hate the world. We've crunched the numbers and know the hotter the earth gets, the more money we make. Wind and solar? Nice try, hippie. Climate chaos? Not a problem for us. We're designing elevated mansions, deep water boarding schools, and dome shopping malls on the moon. Wanna stop us? We'd like to see you try. It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine. The show that's powered by Cops Tears. At least 41 police officers have died and several more have been injured. The border police were traveling in a bus that plunged into a ravine in northwestern Argentina. I am your host, The Stimulator, and if you're like me, you've got to be relieved that the motherfucking COP21 climate negotiations in Paris are finally fucking over. It's about fucking time. What the fuck took so long? Far from producing any meaningful action on curbing greenhouse gas emissions, the past two weeks of marathon luncheons between climate negotiators and industry lobbyists, self-aggrandizing speeches from gangster capitalist politicians, and hours of mainstream media interviews with corporate environmentalists have only released shit tons of more hot air into the atmosphere. In the end, the outcome was always a foregone fucking conclusion. Loads of hype and feel-good rhetoric culminating in a non-binding agreement with billions of dollars earmarked for investment in so-called green energy technologies, which is essentially a giant fucking scam to subsidize greenwashed corporate giants from the energy and extractive industries. I think we can make offshore drilling safe. Climate science OG James Hansen was quick to pour some cold water on peeps, celebrating the significance of the so-called historic agreement. But, as always, corporate NGOs like 350.org are trying to put a positive spin on things to justify their strategic focus on mass climate mobilizations and lobbying and to help ensure that peeps keep those monthly tax-deductible donations rolling in. Uh, well, well, this didn't save the planet but it may have saved the chance of saving the planet. 350.org closed out the COP21 by mobilizing their supporters to form a giant line of peeps holding red banners, meant to symbolize imaginary red lines that industry can't cross if climate change is to be averted. This feel-good action was no doubt intended as a face-saving measure after organizers received widespread criticism for their condemnation of militants who bravely took to the streets on November 29th, in defiance of the French government's imposed state of emergency. After 350.org and other corporate NGOs have bowed to the government pressure and meekly canceled their own protests, they had the chutzpah to criticize those who dared to resist, declaring that they were, quote, not part of the movement. Well, no shit. Not yours, anyway. Meanwhile in Greece, anarchists mourn the 7th anniversary of the Pyx murder of Alexis Grigoropoulos on December 6, in what has become a globally anticipated tradition of intense fucking rioting. And true to form, the comrades in Greece didn't disappoint. Check the shit out. <laughs> This year, these riots had a special significance owing to an international call to action made last month by two imprisoned Greek anarchists, Conspiracy of Cells of Fire member Panayotis Argirou and Alexis's best friend and comrade Nikos Romano who challenged militants to a month of increased insurrectionary attacks and solidarity actions with anarchist prisoners to be carried out under the banner of Black December. So far, 
This call has been answered loud and clear, with a wave of incendiary attacks carried out in Greece, Chile, Germany, Spain, Mexico, and Peru. A flurry of solidarity statements, banner drops actions, and events taking place in countless cities around the world. And Black December is not over yet. So if you've missed out on the fun so far, what the fuck are you waiting for? <laughs>